Hi, I'm Arne from Königsmark and uh, in this video I would like to show you our new motion capture sensors for Cinema 4D. So this is just very early prototype, it's not final design as well these elastic bands of course are just for this demonstration purpose here, it's not final. So um, we try to bring down the cost of these sensors without having to do compromises um, with the um, functionality. So these sensors are really um, high quality. Uh, they have quite a long battery life. You can recharge them, of course. Uh, they will last about five to six hours, so normally a full working day. Uh, you can attach separate sensors as well, but uh, you can also use them just as they are here um, without any wires attached. So um, these sensors use Wi-Fi. They talk to your router or access point, uh, which is then connected, of course, to your Windows or Mac PC. And we have uh, a special plugin for Cinema 4D, so you can really talk to these uh, sensors. I'm just using two of them right now, as you can see, um, on my right arm, uh, just to give you a demo how to control this character I have here in Cinema 4D. Um, first plugin is the root tag. So this one is used to store the current state of your character. So it's taking a snapshot, basically, and you can always return to the snapshot to, let's say, redo your calibration. Uh, and then, of course, the calibration itself is dealt by this uh, root tag. Calibration means that the um, orientation in 3D space of the sensors is recorded and matched to the current orientation of your character. Of course, you have to uh, link the sensors to the joint or object or whatever you like to uh, control. Um, that's done by these remote tags we have here. You can see that uh, we have um, an individual IP for each of these um, remote tags, which is just the IP of the sensor. So every sensor has uh, an IP address. And you can control the uh, transmission interval. So it depends on how many data you, or how much data you would like to collect in which time frame. So uh, let's say you would like to do a slow motion animation later, you have to collect more data in the same time frame than if you uh, would like uh, to do a normal, just normal kind of animation with 25 or 30 frames per second. Um, you can always do diagnosis uh, just to check if there are some connection errors or anything else. And we have some baked parameters so you can use uh, the key reducer to uh, minimize the amount of keyframes after recording. So this is all just um, uh, something you have to do one time before you sh normally start um, with your uh, recordings. And the same is true for the calibration, of course. Um, calibration, you just have to click this button, take the same pose as your character, and after a few seconds, um, and you can see you can use this all by yourself, you don't need an assistant. Uh, after a few seconds, all the data is collected and recorded and you can close this and it, then you can start your live mode. So I switch on the live mode and you can see that now the character behaves um, as I am. So um, of course there is some espresso uh, involved here. You can see that I can rotate the character with my arm movement just to avoid um, collisions. Uh, but this is just a demo setup um, because I've just two sensors hands at hand right now. But you can see even though these are really early prototypes, they have not been calibrated in any way before, um, it already works quite well. So this is just the live mode to check if everything works okay, if there are some unwanted flips or something. Um, and after that, when you're sure everything works fine, you can start your recording just by a click of a button. You can see that the uh, time is running now and you record whatever you like to do. Even though if you um, walk out of the door, you go to a different room and the uh, Wi-Fi connection breaks down, every sensor includes uh, memory, so the recording will continue. Whenever you come back to the Wi-Fi network, the sensors will push the recorded data and the stored data 
uh, to the uh, network so nothing gets lost. That's quite important point with this uh, concept we have. And after you're done, of course, you stop your recording. And the fun part about this, I just um, stop the live mode here. The fun part is that uh, we don't get keyframes if you don't want to. So what we have here is um, a special kind of timeline that only shows uh, one of the recorded um, motion capture curves, just to give you an idea when a mov movement starts, when it ends, and um, so on. Uh, so you can save and reuse this data. So let's say you save this to your disk and afterwards you apply it to a totally different character which has a different kind of hierarchy, um, looks totally different but it still works and that's because this is global data. Um, all sensors give us global data in space so we can retarget this data quite easily. Uh, but of course, most of the time we would like to edit the data, um, modify it somehow. Uh, and so we would like to work in our Cinema 4D timeline and we need real keyframes. So that's no problem. We just have a button here to bake the keyframes. That's about it. You go to your timeline and there they are. These are our keyframes, as you can see. 